Hey, what's up, baby? Operation iDroid here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to get the notorious FBI that allows you to install CIA files on your homebrewed 3DS. If your 3DS is not homebrewed, I'll have a tutorial linked in the description below on how to homebrew your 3DS. However, this version of FBI that works on homebrewed 3DSs is not the full-fledged FBI that works on custom firmware 3DSs that allows you to install any CIA. This version of FBI that is on homebrew only allows you to install legit CIA files which are limited to a very few titles. So, I recommend that you get custom firmware on your 3DS and use that FBI and I'll have a tutorial linked in the description below if you want to learn how to do that. But if you're content with your homebrew 3DS and don't want to try to get custom firmware on it then this tutorial is for you. And if you're excited to get FBI on your homebrew 3DS then please hit that like button as it helps out the video tremendously and I truly appreciate it. But now, without any further ado, let's head into the tutorial. Alright, getting FBI on a homebrewed 3DS is very simple, but keep in mind that if your 3DS does not have custom firmware, then FBI will only be able to install legit CIAs. Anyways, to begin, go ahead and place your SD card into your computer and if you're using sound hacks as your homebrew entry point and it's not working for you, then make sure that your SD card looks like mine. In my tutorial, I made an error and I put the 3DS and boot.3dsx files into a folder. However, they should be on the root of your SD card. So if you're having issues, do that and you should be fine. Anyways, to get FBI, go to your favorite web browser and paste in the URL the link that I have in the description to download FBI, which was made by this awesome person that allowed it to be able to be run only on Homebrew, which is super cool. So go ahead and download the Maki edition of FBI and it'll install a zip file onto your computer. Go ahead and extract that zip file and open the 3DS folder that appeared. Within that 3DS folder, you'll see the FBI folder that we're going to place into our SD card's 3DS folder. So open the 3DS folder in your SD card and drag the FBI folder into that folder there. So now that we have FBI in our SD card, we're also going to have to create a new folder on the root of our SD card, which is CIAs. Here, we're going to place our legit CIAs that FBI will be able to install. Now, I already got a legit CIA that I'm going to be installing onto my device because I want a backup of my Pokemon Omega Ruby, and you guys can do the same. However, I'm not going to show you where you can download the legit CIAs. That's completely up to you. I'm just going to be showing you how to install them now. So. Once you have your legit CIA in the CIA's folder of your SD card, you can go ahead and eject your SD card and put it back into your 3DS. So as you can see here, I have a game card of Pokemon Omega Ruby and I want to install a backup of my Pokemon Omega Ruby so that I don't always have to have my cartridge on me. So go ahead and launch Homebrew however it is that you get into Homebrew, whether it's Sound Hacks or any other Homebrew entry point that you may be using. And when you get into your homebrew launcher, you'll now notice that there is a FBI application within your homebrew launcher, which you'll be able to see looks like so. When you launch FBI, at first it may be a little slow, but it should only take a couple of seconds as you can see here to make a couple of attempts and then successfully run the exploit, which will then take you to FBI, which looks like this. So to install a CIA, what you want to do is go to the SD by pressing A, scroll down to the CIAs and press A on it, and then go ahead and press A on your .CIA file, and then select install and delete CIA, because once it installs onto your device, you'll no longer need the file, which takes up a pretty big amount of space depending on how big the CIA file was. Anyways, depending on the size will also determine how long it will take to install the CIA file into your 3DS. Now, this was Pokemon Omega Ruby 1.77 gigabytes, and it took 30 minutes to install onto my 3DS, so make sure you plug your charger in and be patient as it goes ahead and installs the CIA. So you can pause this video and then come back when your CIA is done installing. So 
once your CI is done installing, it'll say that it installed successfully and we can exit out of FBI to go back into our home menu and see the CIA installed. So just go all the way back until you get to the main menu, press start to exit. And if your screen glitches out like this, don't worry, that happens sometimes. All you have to do is hold the power button for 10 seconds until the device powers off, which you'll know it's off because the blue LED light will turn off. Sometimes the screen may turn black, but the console itself isn't off all the way. But once it's turned off, just go ahead and turn it on again and then it'll say a new software has been added to the home menu. And this will be the CIA that you install. In my case, it was Pokemon Omega Ruby because I wanted to install it as software onto my 3DS so that I no longer had to carry the game cartridge around wherever I went. So as you can see, I removed the game cartridge and the CIA file is still there, which is pretty awesome. So just like that, you can make legal backups of your games and play them without having to take the cartridge wherever you are. Now, if you want to transfer your saves from, for example, Pokemon Omega Ruby cartridge into the CIA file that you just installed, I'm going to be showing you how to do that now. So this will work with any Pokemon game. I'm not exactly sure if it works with other games, but you can try it and I'm pretty sure that it will work. So what you want to do is that on this new CIA file, which will be a completely new game, you want to go ahead and get to a point where you can save. So as soon as you can save, in this case in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, it's right when you're able to move around. And then we're going to head home and go onto our computer to download the JK Save Manager. So put your SD card into your computer, head to your favorite web browser and paste in the URL the link that I have in the description for JK Save Manager. Download the zip file and then go ahead and go back into your computer and extract that zip file. Within it, you'll see that you have a 3DS folder and in that 3DS folder, there's the JKSM folder and we're gonna put that JKSM folder into our SD cards 3DS folder. So JKSM is a awesome homebrew application that allows you to export and import saves. And with this, we are going to be able to transfer our saves from one game to another. So once you've added that to your SD card, go ahead and put your cartridge that has the save that you wanna transfer into your 3DS and launch into homebrew using whatever your homebrew launcher exploit is. So once you get into homebrew, you'll see that you now have a new application which is called JKSM and JK Save Manager will allow us to export our save. So go ahead and go into your homebrew launcher, open JK Save Manager and then you want to select the game that you want. So this can be a little tricky sometimes because if it's like in my case that it's the same exact game, you won't notice which game is which, but the cartridge is always first. So if I go to the left, I'll go to another game. And then if I go to the right, then it'll still be Pokemon Omega Ruby and it'll look like it didn't change. So just keep that in mind. So to export your save, all you have to do is go to save data options, export save, select new save, and you can name the save whatever you want as long as it's something that you will remember. Then you can go back and exit JK Save Manager. So once you exit JK Save Manager and you go back to the homebrew launcher, remove the cartridge from your 3DS so that you don't mix it up for the other game that you have installed. So now you'll see that I only have one Pokemon Omega Ruby here. And when I click on it, I'll be able to import my save by going to Save Data Options, selecting Import Save, and selecting the name of the file that I exported from the other Pokemon Omega Ruby, which in this case was one, and then just go ahead and import it, and then you can exit JK Save Manager. I usually like to import the game twice just for safe measure um, to make sure that it really got in there, although I'm sure if you do it once, it'll still be fine, but it's just a little habit of mine. But once you exit the homebrew launcher, you can go ahead and run your CIA file. And now in your CIA file, you should have the save that you transferred from the cartridge. So that was just for the people that wanted to do that. And in this case, this was actually a Pokemon Omega Ruby egg lock, which is pretty cool. If you want to learn how to get this egg lock save, I'll have a link in the description and a card on screen now so that you can watch that video and learn how to get that on your 3DS. But yeah, that is FBI on a homebrewed 3DS without the need for custom firmware. 
and it allows you to install legit CIAs onto your 3DS that you can use as legal backups of your game cartridge so that you don't have to carry them around everywhere you go. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like as it helps out the video tremendously and I truly appreciate it, as well as comment down below what your thoughts are on this homebrewed FBI. I would love to hear what you all have to say as I read all the comments. Finally, if you are new to the channel and you have not subscribed yet, I highly recommend that you subscribe to be notified whenever I upload a new video because I make awesome homebrewed and custom firmware tutorials pretty often, which you can check out some other ones on screen now. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and welcome to the operation.